you got your Bible tonight, turn to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. And while you're right there, just hold your finger there and go to Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to have verse 11 there. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That word ignorant, a lot of people say, well, if somebody was ignorant of something, they'd get mad at you. But ignorant just means you don't know. Right. Hey, when you know to do better and you don't, that means you're stupid. There's a difference. Amen? Right. Amen? Yeah. It's like a fellow grabbing a hot iron and he lays it down and grabs the other hand. He wasn't ignorant about it. He knew it was hot. He just yeah. grabbed it twice. He was stupid. Yeah. So we see tonight, but we're not supposed to be ignorant of his devices. Right. Right. Hey, we're supposed to know Satan. And if you'll notice that word there, devices, is plural. Yeah. He works on our mind and our thoughts and different things like that. Yeah. Then in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And the word wiles are talking about the cunning devices that Satan's got. Hey, not only that, the method he uses on trying to get people to fall. Not only that, it's talking about the strategy he uses. That he uses to get us. Not only that, it means for him to lie and wait. He's got patience tonight. He's got patience. He'll wait on you. So with that thought in mind tonight, I'd like to preach for just a few minutes about... What kind of trap does Satan have for you? What kind of trap does Satan have for you? Pastor Doe, would you pray for me tonight, please? Father, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. We pray for you to help us tonight. Lord Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Well, we see tonight that the devil has got a trap for each and every one of us. But we got to understand and realize that these traps are real. Uh, I remember a time before I got saved, uh, I, I run up with this fella, and he was a trapper. Anybody in here doing trapping? All right. He was. He he done a lot of trapping. He done a lot of it for for his uh, living. So he was good at it. He was experienced on it. And uh, and the first time I went with him, I want you to know, I was totally amazed that somebody can know that much about a critter and figure out how to catch him. Well, could I tell you something tonight? Satan knows everything about us. He knows how to catch us. Amen. I, if you're going, anybody ever set a rabbit box? Catch your rabbit. You don't set your rabbit box in the highway because them rabbits in the road is easy to catch. They flat. Amen. But. The thing about it is, Satan's going to set a trap for me. He ain't need me setting one down at the beer joint. Right. I don't go there no more. Right. But I do go to the grocery store. Right. I do go to the gas station. Right. Amen. Right. I don't like to go to Walmart. Sometimes I have to. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But you know, we do go places. And he knows where I go. Right. He knows what would entice me. Right. Amen. Right. So we got to keep that in mind tonight. But we see not only that, that... That Satan is the best trapper that ever been. He knows exactly how to set a trap. Hey, there's some things about a trap. Uh, I brought some stuff with me tonight. I, I didn't bring no no bag full of snakes or nothing. Yeah. Amen. The barber be won't make us another door. That's right. But uh, I got some things in here, and I hope like I said I hope it's gonna be a blessing to you. But. Uh, there's one thing we need right there. We take this old trap right here. Now, this is one Daniel Boone used to use. Hey, they, they don't use much like that no more because they don't hold real good. They don't work real good. But you can take this trap and everybody see how rusty it is. Y'all have blackjacks up here? Red oaks? You can take some blackjack bark 
and put it in a pot, get it to boiling, and put this trap in there and boil it real good, and it'll clean it. But when it comes out, it'll be a flat black in color and won't rust. And while it's hot, <clears throat> you have you some beeswax over here in another pot, and you just dip it down in that beeswax and pull it back out, and it'll dry, but it'll be slick. And it'll work real good. Can I tell you that Satan's traps work real good? Yeah. They're real slick. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I got two of them old steel traps like that. This here's a more modern trap. It's got springs and but that treadle right there, when you when you step on that treadle, it closes on. But you can take this trap though and have it working just as good as anything. Could I tell you tonight that all of Satan's traps are gonna work good? Yes, sir. Amen. They're gonna work good. Hey, you have a trap set and you go to messing with it, you better be careful. Right. And there's something else about a trap. We used to call them old patients because you put one on a trail, it'll sit there and it'll wait. It'll wait. It'll wait. It won't get in a hurry. It'll wait on you, brother. It'll be waiting on you. The two kind of sets, what they call a bait set. And you find a trail where a critter been using and you can go over there and clean your little place off, put your trap right behind it, put you some bait back there. Put something back there that they desire to have. Catch your nose. They come over there. And they get in the trap. Not on that, it's one they call a sneak set. You just got this trail that the critter been using. And you just set it there. And one day he come through, he's going to step in it. Hey, Satan got a lot of sneak sets for us. Hey, we had to be careful. Had to be careful what we're doing and where we're going. Right. And watch out for the traps of Satan. In Judges chapter 16, I know everybody knows this story. Samson fell into a trap. But it was a trap of his own demise, you might say. He wanted something he shouldn't have wanted. He desired to have something he ought not have had. And mom and daddy said, you don't want that Philistine woman. But he said, yeah, I want her. And so we see, he wanted to find out about Samson's strength. In 16 and verse 16, it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. He told her all his heart and said unto her, There have not a, come a, a razor upon my head, for I, I have been a Nazarite unto the Lord from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. But see, now he was a special man. God had set him aside for some special stuff. Right. But now he's going to be like any other man. Right. And she made him sleep. Well, let me back up. I missed something. And when Delilah saw, he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the Lord's Philistine, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the Lord's Philistine came up unto her and brought money in her hand, and she made him sleep upon her knees. Then she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And it was not that the Lord had departed from him. Hey, sometimes people get in a trap they don't know the Spirit of the Lord is not leading them no more. Hey, they done decided, I'm going to do this over here. That ain't what the Lord wants. And if you uh, ain't doing what the Lord wants, then you've got to be careful because you can fall in the same trap that Samson did. But we see, there were some great things about Samson. He was a judge of Israel for 40 years. Not only that, he killed a lion by the Spirit of the Lord in chapter 14, verses 5 and 6. And he killed 30 Philistines for the clothes in chapter 14 and 19. Then he killed a thousand with a jawbone of an ass in chapter 15 and 15. He tore down the gates of Gaza. Not only did he tore them down, he took them with him. And it says it took 50 men to set the gates, 10 men to close it and put the bar in. Now here's one man doing all that in the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. See, hey, hey, as long as we where God wants, we're doing what He wants, we can do anything. 
God said it's nothing impossible for us. So, I mean, we can do it. But we see not on that, he, he caught 300 foxes and tied their tails together and burned up their crops. We all know these stories. But the biggest thing we remember about Samson, he put his eyes out and made him a gazing style. And then he died one more time and killed a big crowd for this thing. But we see he fell in that trap. <coughs> James tells us in 1 15, then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. It could be spiritual death, physical death. It could be either one. I want us to know tonight that temptation is very deceiving in the way it comes. Hey, no one is admitted. No one. Everybody is capable of being tempted. We see tonight that it don't matter if you're young or you're old. You can be tempted and deceived. It don't matter if you go to church or you don't go to church. Hey, that crowd that don't go to church and they hate God in church, the devil's already got them in a trap. Hey, they already caught them in a cage. Hey, it don't matter if you're a man or a woman. It don't matter if you're a boy or a girl. Hey, you can be tempted and deceived by the devil. We see Samson fail. So we see tonight, how many people seen a deacon of a church fall? What's it do to the church? Not on that, what about a preacher? What about a preacher? What about just a church member? Hey, nobody's exempt. Hey, if you're not a good church member, you still can be deceived and tempted. Amen? We see that David fell. And God said that David was a man after his own heart. But it was a time when kings were supposed to go off to battle. Now here you got the king of Israel. And they want to go off to battle. And he's the king. Wouldn't it be out if he said, I'm going to stay home tonight? Maybe I just don't really feel good. You know? But the Bible said it was a time when kings were supposed to go to battle. He stayed home. We all know the story. He woke up and went on the rooftop. Saw this woman and then things happened in his life. He fell in the trap. If he'd been in the battlefield, that wouldn't have happened. If he'd been where he's supposed to be, that wouldn't have happened. Hey, remember where you're supposed to be? Sunday morning, Sunday night. Where are you supposed to be at? What about Wednesday night? Amen. What about revivals? Hey, if where are you supposed to be? You've got to be careful being where you're supposed to be. <clears throat> we see not only that, people fall and they lose their family. Hey, people fall, they lose their good name and their testimony. And many times, when you get caught like that, you don't ever get a chance to get straightened out. It seems like it's on and on. But I'm trying to get back where I was. I want to do like I used to and all these things, but they don't never get back because of that thing that come, they let come in their life. So we, we see tonight that the traps that we fall into. James also tells us, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. What you thinking about tonight? What's on your mind tonight? Am I, am I liking what Brother Kenny's saying? Or, man, I wish I was over watching the rest of that ball game. I mean, think about it. Think about it. What's going on in your mind? Because that's where it starts at. Right. Amen. Amen. And then it moves from up here, down to here. Then I got a problem. Right. I got a problem when it gets down here. Yes, Not only that, we see that it looks like in our day and time, people's happy being trapped. I mean, it does to me. Places you go, you hear things about people uh, don't go to church no more than you used to go. Don't want to go to church. Don't want to do nothing for the Lord no more. They got complacent in that trap. Amen. Uh, so we see what kind of trap Satan got tonight. Hey, the trap that Satan's got I know some people got caught in these traps. Some people get caught in that trap of suicide. Well, I just ended it all, and everything's going to be all right. Well, if I was ending it all tonight, what would it do to Barbara? What would it do to my family? What would it do to my? What would it do to this church? Hey, y'all don't really know me, but what would it do? What would it do? It, it would hurt this church, wouldn't it? Hey, people get caught up in reincarnation. 
What about the religions of the world that believe they're going to come back as something else? That's a trap of Satan. Hey, right. some of them believe in being your own God. Amen. Hey, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm all right. Yeah. Amen. Anybody ever heard that? That's a trap of Satan. That's some of, this, some of the bait that he uses. Hey, you got lots of time. Yeah. Got to tell you tonight, well, we don't know how much time we got. I was working on a job one time. And the Lord was dealing with me about witnessing to this fellow on the job. He was a young fellow. And I tell him about the Lord inviting him to church, give him tracts and talk to him. And <clears throat> he said, Kenny, I ain't going to get mad at you for doing that. I said, but I got plenty of time. That's what the words he told me. And then the next week, it seemed like we was in a new part of the plant. It was as quiet as it is in here. We was putting in new machinery. Wasn't no noise. Went to him all week. That Saturday morning, he didn't show up for work. He had got drunk and shot himself. Broke my heart. But here he is. Here's the truth, and he knowed it. But yet, Satan talked him into taking his own life. Mm. It still bothers me sometimes. Think about it that close. Just do nothing. Just I just get up and leave out the church or don't do nothing. Hey, not only that, what about maybe next time? Preach when I come back, I'm gonna give my life to the Lord. That's a trap of Satan. Amen. Amen. I was gonna get Barbara to set these for me. These are real traps. And while I'm setting them, I want to remind you that every trap that Satan's got is real. The Bible tells us to be sober, to be vigilant, because our adversary, he's mine, he's yours, he's yours, our adversary, is what? He's walking about. He's walking about seeking whom he may devour. Hey, he don't care. As long as he gets somebody, he don't care. He don't care. Who's pretty fast? Anybody want to come up and trip one of these and don't get caught? <laughs> hey, these are real now. Hey, they're real. They're real, real. Satan's traps is just as real. Hey, just as real as these, some people say, well, I can't see the devil. I don't know what, if he's after me or not, but let me tell you, he is. He's after you. And not only that, if you mess with him, he will get you. He's the great deceiver. I don't want to brag on him, but I'm going to tell you the truth. There's nobody that can deceive anybody better than Satan. Better than Satan. This is for the preacher here. <laughs> hey, this is a big one right here. I'd catch somebody big right there. But we see tonight these traps is set. And I had to use the hammer on that one because it, it, it tore a highlighter all the pieces the other night <laughs> when I was practicing. But we see that the traps is set. And what kind of bait would Satan want to use? Now, when I said a mouse trap, how a lot of time I use peanut butter. Anybody like peanut butter? You better be careful now. If you're going to get peanut butter off of this, you better be careful. What about extra money? Hey, I, I've, I've had some jobs, and I know we work. You got to work. And sometimes it might be that I have to work on Sunday, but I ain't volunteering. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. But some people say, hey, I'm going to buy this other thing. Yes. I need some extra monies. And, uh-oh, got caught. Yes. Got caught. Let's see what else is there. Uh-oh, I got caught. And my honor and my testimony is gone. Yes. My honor and my testimony is gone. 
let's say we're going to go to the beach. That, that's, that happens a lot around the house because we're pretty close. We're going to go to the beach and we're going to miss church this Sunday. Uh oh. What was that? You got your children. Next thing you know, your kids is not serious about church anymore. No Mom and daddy ain't serious about it. Why should I be serious about it? Hey, y'all like that? Or, we got family coming over. Hey, just think about it. We got visitors coming over. And we get in this trap. And what's this? Oh, what about your rewards when you get to heaven? What about your rewards being gone that easy? We said, Brother Ken, it don't work that easy, do it? Yes, it does. Amen. Well, this is serious, ain't it? Just think, what might get you out of church today? What will happen if you got out of church today? What about your hope and your home be gone? Amen. Yeah. What about the opposite sex? Hey, people don't like to talk about that much, but that's it's true. Hey, you get thinking about something, and you get down here, boy, you're in trouble. Right. What happens? What'll happen? You lose your cheer, your comfort, your yeah. compassion, yeah. your candle, your light is put out. Yeah. Your light will be put out. Hey, what about that? <clears throat> what about this big one over here? This is going to make a racket one. <laughs> Woo, yeah. Oh, what we got there? We got you. Got you in there. Hey, anybody in here is capable of being caught in one of the devil's traps tonight. Amen. And I've done this for a reason. You got to see... H, we're going to spell church. You got that? But you know, we can't have church without you. Y'all going to be having revival. Somebody might get revival, but the church can't have revival if you ain't here. Right. Amen? Hey, just think about that for a little bit. These traps that Satan got set, they real. They just as real as these. Debate we've talked about is real. Hey, the things that would get us out of church, the things that would pull me away from God is real. Back in Vietnam, we had a lot of people to get killed because they got comfortable where they was at, they got careless. Don't get comfortable where you're at. Don't get careless with Satan and his traps. Don't get comfortable and let Satan get control. Because if you do, you'll be in one of his traps. Because we just read that scripture. First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober. It ain't telling me not to drink. I know not to drink. Be sober minded. Hey, what's one thing about a a drunk person. He ain't worried about his surroundings. He don't care what's around him. He's not conscious where he's at sometimes. He's just doing his own thing. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, it ain't the preacher, it ain't the deacon, it ain't the evangelist, it's the devil walking about seeking who may devour but I want you to know tonight that God can help us stay away from them traps. I can stay away. I can ask the Lord to help me. Lord, guide me. Please help me and show me. Hey, we see that, that God heard Samson and he died in the situation. But not only that, we heard that God heard David. He said, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Amen. God heard Peter, Matthew 4 and 30. But when he saw that the wind was busterous, he was afraid. And again, the saint, he cried out. He didn't have a 30-minute prayer. He said, Lord, save me. Right, right. 
He, he needed help right then. And you know, Jesus was able to give it to him right then. Right then. He reached down and grabbed him. What kind of trap was Peter in? Lack of faith or looking away? Looking away. Hey, one night God heard my prayer. I've, I've been in a trap before. God got me out. He heard me. He helped me. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Glory to God. Amen. Hey, we've got to call on the Lord because the devil is out there at us and he's, he's a master at deceiving people. He's a master. But you know what the Bible tells us? In Psalms 119 and 105, it says, Thy word is a light to my feet. Now, if I had a little flash, I could shine right here at my feet. I could see where I'm walking. I need to know where I'm walking at. Or am I walking the right path? Am I walking the wrong path? But I remember when I was little, we'd spend a night with these people sometimes, and they'd keep us at night. Anybody ever had to go to the bathroom that was out back? The outhouse. That's a scary trail at night. Especially for a young fella. Amen. There'd be boogers behind every rock, every tree. <laughs> but if you had a flashlight, you know what? You wasn't a bit scared. Right. Why? Because you could see what was out there. Right. Not only is the Bible, God's Word, a light in my feet, the Bible says, and... A light under my path. Right. But I can see where I'm going, yeah. but not on that. I can see what's down the road. Yeah. Right. I can see what's over yonder. Right. I can see what's over here. So we use God's Word to help us tonight. Yeah. Hey, we don't have to get in one of the devil's traps. Right. Right. Hey, I don't have to step in one of his traps. I don't have to get. Right. Hey, that trap there would hurt you. Because yeah. right. it's got you on it. Yeah. It hurts you. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Right. Hey, if you get in a trap, it's going to hurt you. Sure. If you get one of the devil's traps, it's going to hurt. Yeah. It's going to hurt. It might not maim you. You might still have both your hands and your feet. But it's going to hurt. Yeah. Right. It's going to hurt your family. Right. It's going to hurt the church. Yeah. Brother Preacher, yeah. you get us a song? Short. I, I told the preacher, I was a simple-minded person. I got a simple message. But I like an illustration. Because you go home night, you can think about that. Well, I don't want to get caught in one of these traps. Lose my children, lose my home, lose my rewards. So think about it tonight. Maybe somebody's walking close to a trap now. Amen. Maybe somebody's getting too close right now. Hey, just think about it. Because the devil is not going to let it up. But one day, it'll all be over. We won't have to worry about that devil no more. But right now, we don't have to worry about him, but we is got to be aware that he's around and he's working. Because the Bible says, Our adversary walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Amen, Brother Preacher. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.